catastrophic implosion. The unthinkable became all too real this past week as we learned of the fate of undersea explorer Stockton Rush's Titan submersible on its way to the Atlantic grave of the Titanic. The questions, the second guessing, David Pogue tells us, are likely to continue for a long time to come. Last summer, a company called Ocean Gate invited Sunday morning to join an expedition to the Titanic. At the time, I was thrilled. Next time I come out of this doorway, I'll either be a changed man forever or cursing the bad weather. As the whole world knows now, Ocean Gate's business was taking adventure seekers on these Titanic dives. Well, we're sitting on the Titanic. We yeah. are on the Titanic. <laughs> for $250,000 a ticket on a one-of-a-kind carbon fiber submersible called the Titan. Carbon fiber is a great material. It's better than titanium. It's better than a lot of other materials. This is Stockton Rush, the CEO of Ocean Gate and the designer of the sub. Last Sunday, as he was piloting the sub to the Titanic, it imploded, killing him and his four passengers. We spent nine days at sea with Rush last summer, and in wake of the tragic news, we thought you might like to see more of what we saw and hear more of what Stockton Rush said. The Titan wasn't like any previous deep sea submersible. There was no dashboard, just a touchscreen computer and a single power button. We only have one button, that's it. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've, I've seen submersibles and they are banks of controls, yeah. like, like cockpit after cockpit. Exactly. And this is to other submersibles what the iPhone was to the Blackbird. <laughs> but many of its components seemed surprisingly cheap. For views outside the sub, he had installed store-bought security cameras. As for the ceiling lights... I got these from uh, Camper World. And then there was the steering unit. Um, we run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! So, it seems like a lot of the way you made this is by taking off-the-shelf parts and sort of MacGyvering them together. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Does that not raise anybody's eyebrows in the industry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm definitely an outlier. There were a lot of rules out there that didn't make engineering sense to me. Everyone I know keeps asking me the same question. Why would you get on that dangerous sub? Well, first of all, Stockton Rush had the credentials. He majored in aerospace engineering at Princeton. He designed and flew his own airplanes. He designed previous submersibles. Second, he was emphatic that the important parts of the Titan were rock solid, like the carbon fiber body for which NASA served as a consultant. There are certain things that you want to be uh, buttoned down, and that's the pressure vessel. Once the pressure vessel is, you're certain it's not going to collapse on everybody, everything else can fail. Your thrusters can go, your lights can go, you're still going to be safe. Third, I was convinced by an expert, P.H. Narjale, the veteran deep sea explorer who also perished in the Titan. Over the years, he'd been to the Titanic more than just about anyone. How many times have you been? Uh, with the last uh, dive, uh, 37 times. You've been to the Titanic 37 times? Yes. I was in charge of uh, one, two, three, four, five, five sub. How different is the Titan from those other subs? Completely different. Most of them, you have a sphere. Was there never a point when you wondered about the, the safety of the sub at that depth? No. Two or three years ago, I had a phone call with uh, Stockton, and he explained to me that he was doing a, a lot of tests. He showed me some the, the ways they were building the stuff. I said, OK, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no problem to dive in the sub. I was also impressed by the sub's seven redundant systems for returning to the surface. These are roll weights. We can actually roll this up and those come off. That gains us some buoyancy to come back to the surface. Okay. These triple weights, we call them, are, uh, are hydraulically driven. Expedition manager Kyle Bingham. Underneath this tray hang these bags. We're around, around 35 pounds. And those hang down there. Typical dive will have eight of them. Uh, we can also use our thrusters. We have enough power to thrust back up. And then under this last fairing here, we have our variable ballast tank or soft ballast. It's an air bladder that we use a big 10,000 PSI air tank that's under the tail to fill that up, fill it with air, 
and then it helps bring us to the surface. There were even sandbags that detach automatically after about 16 hours, even if everyone inside had passed out. Their connectors would dissolve in seawater. So you have a backup of a backup of a backup of a backup of a backup. Correct. All stations are reporting the dive to go. Please stand by. Finally, the crew seemed to foster a culture of safety. There were checklists, inspections before and after every dive, and a three strikes rule. If three things seemed out of the ordinary, no matter how minor, they'd cancel the dive. I learned that the hard way on our own dive. We're in the water, we're floating. Woo! At this point, divers are supposed to detach the sub from its launch platform. So apparently those floats there came off the platform and that wasn't supposed to happen. So we're scrubbing? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the consensus up here. Copy that. I never did see the Titanic, and I wasn't unusual. In OceanGate's first two summers of Titanic operations, it spent a total of 50 days floating above the shipwreck site. But because of waves, bad weather, and malfunctions, the Titan actually made it to the Titanic only 12 times. But through it all, Stockton Rush defended his unconventional approach. I mean, anything when you're trying something outside the box, people inside the box think you're nuts. <laughs> Same thing when uh, Elon Musk was doing SpaceX. Inside the box, everything's scary. But as early as 2018, there was concern about the Titan's design. A former employee says that when he raised safety concerns, Rush fired him. That same year, a group of submersible engineers urged Rush to seek certification of the Titan by a safety agency. Rush declined, saying that regulation would stifle innovation. At some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed, don't get in your car, don't do anything. Yeah. At some point, you're going to take some risk, and it really is a risk-reward question. I said, I think I can do this just as safely by breaking the rules. So, Captain McLaren, um, have you spent much time in submarines? David, my total time under the water, divorced from the outside atmosphere, is a little over five and three quarters years. No kidding. Fact. Retired U.S. Navy submarine captain Alfred McLaren is not impressed by OceanGate's innovations. I mean, would you fly in an airplane that somebody excitedly tells you, well, it's going to be a lot cheaper because we found a new way of attaching the wings? Yeah, right. He theorizes that the Titan failed not because it was made of carbon fiber, but because it was made of three dissimilar materials, carbon fiber, titanium, and plexiglass for the porthole. When you have different materials, different molecular structure, they have different coefficients of expansion and compression, and you, then you make repeated cycles in depth, of course you're going to work that seal loose. And that's why submarines don't run around with, with any portholes at all, come to think of it. It's a weak point. I think there's a, a great, almost surreal um, irony here, which is Titanic sank because the captain took it full steam into a, an ice field at night on a moonless night with very poor visibility uh, after he had been repeatedly warned by telegram, by Marconigram. In an interview with Anderson Cooper, filmmaker and veteran Titanic diver James Cameron pointed out a sad parallel between Stockton Rush and the captain of the Titanic. The arrogance and the hubris that sent that ship to its doom is exactly the same thing that sent those people in that, that sub to their fate. The world mourns the loss of Stockton Rush, P.H. Narjolet, and their three passengers, British billionaire Hamish Harding, Pakistani businessman Jazada Daywood, and his son Suleiman. Already there's talk of restrictions and regulations and lawsuits. Will the Ocean Gate disaster mean fewer people going adventuring? Well, every year people do die skydiving and scuba diving and climbing Mount Everest. Tragic every time, and yet people still keep coming. Some people just have that itch. For them, danger is the point. The risk of dying gives meaning to living. I think Stockton Rush was among them. I wanted to be sort of the Captain Kirk. Um, I didn't want to be the passenger in the back. <laughs> and I realized that the ocean is is the universe. That's where life is. 